Hello, welcome to another exciting episode of Mr. Black Explains. Um, so today we're going to be talking about greatest common factor, least common multiple, and um, fractions that are equal to one. So uh, let's start off with greatest common factor. Now the reason that uh, we do this because there may be math concepts we need to know what the largest number that will go into two different numbers is. Um, there may be um, where you need to know what a fraction um, that is equal to uh, one, like when we're adding or subtracting fractions and you need to borrow one, you need to convert that one into a fraction that you can work with. So, and we'll get into, so let's say we've got um, greatest common factor and let's say we want factor 12 and 18. Okay, so I'm going to look at all the numbers that will go into both of these evenly. So we've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, and 12. These are all the, the numbers that will uh, go into 12 evenly. Now you notice, once we hit the halfway point, which in this case is 6, the next number is obviously going to be 12. Now we've got 1, 2, 3, 6, 9 and 18. Okay, those are all the factors that go into 18. Now we're going to look at the greatest common factor. So, first off, 1 will go into 12 and 18, but it's not the largest number. 2 will go into 12 and 18, but it also is not the largest number in either of these columns. 3 will go into 12 and 18, but again, it is not the largest number. But 6 is the largest number. Is the largest number in 12? and 18 will go into both of these evenly. So, 6 is my greatest common factor. The greatest common factor of 12 and 18 is 6. Okay, so let's do, um, let's do another one. Let's say we've got, um, uh, let's see, um, let's say we've got 6 and 12. Okay, so, Let's say we got 1, 2, 3, and 6. We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, and 12. Okay. Now, the greatest common factor between these two is obviously 6. Because 6, even though I'm working with 6 here, 6 is, will go into 6 and will also go into 12. So it is the largest common factor uh, for both of these. Also, another really helpful um, tip is... To ensure that you don't miss any factors, uh, I like to do this trick. 1 times 6 is 6. 2 times 6 is 6. 1 times 12 is 12. 2 times 6 is 12. And 3 times 4 is 12. Now, let's show up another one here. Let's say we've got 16. Okay. And I want to factor that out. So we got 1, 2, 4, um, 8, uh, let me see, and 16. Okay, so I have 1, 2, 4, 8, and 16. Now, if I want to do the greatest common factor of all three of these, let's say I want to do this here. Now, in this case, the greatest common factor is going to be 2, because 2 is the largest number that will go into all three of these numbers evenly. Okay, and uh, also, same thing here, if I wanted to make sure I didn't miss a uh, factor, 1 times 6 is 6, 2 times 8 is, or excuse me, 1 times 16 is 16, 2 times 8 is 16, and I've got a lone number here, 4, okay, now I know that 4 times 4 is 16, that is my square root. If you have a, an odd number out and you know it's not the square, then you miss a number, otherwise it is more than likely the square root. Okay, let's say we've got, um, all right, so we've got greatest common factor. Now let's say we've got uh, least common multiple. Okay, least common multiple. And it, just like it's implied, it is multiplication. So if I've got uh, 3 and 6, I'm going to just multiply these. So let's say three, uh, 3 times 1 is 3, 3 times 2 is 6. 9, 12, 15, 18, 
21, 24, and so forth and so forth. Now 6, I've got 6, 12, 18, 24, 30, 36, 42, uh, 48, so forth and so forth. Okay, so these are all the multiples of 6. Now, like the last one with the greatest common factor, now we want the least common multiple. I mean, I mean, I could go out here to a million something and find two factors that will fit into that these will both fit into. But I want in this case now I want the least common. So I'm going to look at this and say, well, in this case, the least common multiple is six. Six will go into six once, and three will go into six twice. So in this case, six is my least common multiple. But let's say I've got um. Oh, uh, let's see. Uh, let's say I've got nine. Okay. So now we've got uh, 18, 27, 36, uh, 45, okay, 54. And I can just keep going. But in this case, now I've got three numbers. Let's say I want to find the least common multiple of all three of these numbers. So let's look. So we've got, so the, the, least common multiple can't be less than uh, less than 9 anyway. So we got 18, 18, and 18 here. We don't have a 12 here, so 18, 18, and 18 is the least common multiple of 3, 6, and 9. Okay, now let's take a look at fractions that are equal to 1. And this list is basically infinite. As many numbers as you can throw out up there, you can make a fraction that's equal to the one. So uh, I'm just going to write this up here. Fraction is equal to one. Anytime you have a fraction or excuse me, anytime you have a number over another number, it is always equal to one. So if I have Three, let's say I've got the fraction three over three. It's equal to one because I can divide three goes into three one time. Okay, if I've got 15 over 15, it's equal to one. If I have 1,248,592 over 1,248,592, it's going to be equal to what? Right there, one. Okay? So anytime you have a number over a number it is always equal to one. And I tell my students, and I'll probably bring this up in another video, but when you have a fraction, people get freaked out about fractions. A fraction is nothing more than a division problem. If you look at a division symbol, you've got a fraction bar, and you've got a dot up there in your numerator spot and a dot in your uh, denominator spot. Basically, you're saying, well, it's a fraction, but we don't know what numbers are, so we're just going to put dots. And that is your fra your uh, that is your division symbol. So remember, and just like I, um, uh, and I will explain this uh, later, um, and I think I put it into a previous video, but uh, where you have the divisor, the dividend, the quotient, okay? divisor, dividend, quotient, which would be your answer, and so forth. But anyway, when you look at fractions, just think division. That's all they are, is a division problem. And I look forward to seeing you on the next video. Thank you.